In this video, we're going to be working a couple more examples calculating radical halogenation product ratios using this table of relative reactivity. I guess I should put EX since this is a this video entails working examples. All right, the first example we'll be looking at is a chlorination reaction of this alkane here. And just glancing at it, you can see that there are methyl, secondary, and tertiary hydrogens present. So there are equivalent methyl hydrogens present at these two carbons. These two carbons are equivalent to one another because they're both bound to this tertiary carbon. So between them, there are six equivalent primary hydrogens on this carbon. These three carbons are also equivalent to one another, but they're distinct from these two carbons. So the hydrogens they bear are all equivalent to one another as well. So you have nine primary hydrogens here. You have two secondary hydrogens on this carbon. And you have one tertiary hydrogen on this carbon. So we'll get four distinct products. And I'll go ahead and write them. Okay, so I have drawn all of the all of the possible radical chlorination products here. So we have four of them. So this product results from substitution of, of one of these hydrogens with the chlorine. One of these six hydrogens with the chlorine. So as we've done in previous examples, we find the product of the relative reactivity and the number of possible of equivalent hydrogens resulting in a particular product. So we're dealing with chlorination, right? And these are all primary hydrogens. Relative reactivity is one. And looking here, we have six equivalent primary hydrogens that will give you this product. So we have a relative reactivity of one times six, and we get six. Now looking at this product, this is a this is a tertiary chlorination product. It results from substitution of this tertiary hydrogen with the chlorine atom. Looking at the table, tertiary hydrogens have a relative reactivity with chlorine of 5. There's only one of them, so relative reactivity times the number is 5 times 1, and that's 5. Now looking at this one here, this, this product here results from substitution of a secondary hydrogen. It's this hydrogen, one of, one of these two hydrogens I should say, is being substituted with a chlorine. Referring to this table here, you can see that secondary hydrogens have a relative reactivity of 4 with chlorine. So relative reactivity times a number is 4 times 2 because there's two of them and you get 8 for the product. And now we're looking at this product which results from substitution of one of these nine hydrogens on each of these, on any one of these three carbons here. You substitute one of one of these hydrogens, any one of these nine hydrogens with the chlorine. The result is this product here. So you have, and these are primary hydrogens again. And remember, the rel relative reactivity, primary hydrogens is one because the, this table was created normalizing all the relative reactivities of uh, ver the various hydrogens to each of these halogens to 
to uh, those of primary hydrogens. So we set the reactivity of primary hydrogens to be one and and based on that being one, the relative reactivities of the others are computed. All right. So we have a relative reactivity of one. We have nine possible hydrogens whose substitution results in this product or can result in this product. One times nine is nine. So like we've done in previous examples, we add up these four numbers to get a total. So total equals six plus five plus eight plus nine. That looks to be 15 plus 13, 28. Okay. So we take each one of these numbers and divide by 28. So this 6 over 28, if you convert that to a percentage, it's approximately 21%. Here we have 5 over 28. Convert that to a percentage, and that's the same thing as multiplying by 100%. You get roughly 18%. Divide 8 by 28. Convert to a percentage. You get about 29%. Divide 9 by 28, convert to a percentage, you get about 32%. And these are all rounded to the nearest percent. So just to do a gut check, we should add up to add these all up to see if they add up to 100%. 32 and 28, or sorry, 32 and 18 is 50, and 29 and 21 is also 50. So 50. 50 plus 50 is 100 percent. And in these types of calculations, if you don't get exactly 100 percent, don't be too worried because there is some rounding that's being done, which could throw your results off a little bit. So the same thing that we did for reaction of this alkane with chlorine, we're going to now do with bromine. And of course, let's say, let's say heat or UV radiation is used to furnish the radical and I should have written that here in the chlorine case as well I should say or or okay so you will have the same substitution patterns forming you know but Remember that the uh, tertiary product is going to dominate in the case of bromine because it's far more selective. And the primary substitution products are going to be negligible in the grand scheme of things for, for bromine. But we'll go ahead and write down all the possible products. Okay, so these are the four possible substitution products. It's basically the same as for chlorine, but uh, we replace the chlorine with the bromine in, in each case. So this, this product results from substitution of any one of these six hydrogens. This product results from substitution of this tertiary hydrogen. This product here results from substitution of any one of these two secondary hydrogens and this product here results from substitution of any one of these nine primary hydrogens. So let's do the same computation we did for chlorine. So we look at the relative reactivity times the number of each type So for bromine, first primary is 1. So relative reactivity here is for, for these, there are six hydrogens, six hydrogens whose substitution would lead to this product. So 
we have 1 times 6 equals 6. Now this tertiary product, referring to the table, the relative reactivity to of bromine to a tertiary hydrogen is 1,700. And again, that's relative to 1 being that for the primary hydrogen. So relative reactivity times the number is going to be 1,700 times 1, and this is 1,700. Now for secondary, we have two secondary hydrogens whose substitution would lead to this product. So relative reactivity times the number. Let's look up what the relative reactivity of secondary hydrogens to bromination is. 80. Didn't, didn't mean to make that stray mark there. So again, we have two hydrogens whose abstraction and subsequent, uh, I guess, whose substitution in the grand scheme of things will lead to this product. So 80 times 2 is 160. And there are nine equivalent hydrogens whose substitution would lead to this product here. So here we have the nine equivalent hydrogens. So remember, these are all primary hydrogens. Their relative reactivity is one uh, times number. So there are one, and there are there are nine of these. Relative reactivity is one. There are nine of these. And we get 9. Okay, so let's do a total here. Well, when we're adding 6, 1700, 160, and 9, the 6 and 9 don't really contribute a whole lot to that sum. So we can just say the total is approximately just 1700 plus 160. And that's equal to 1860. So for all intents and purposes, these uh, when we divide we divide six by here we'd uh, we divide six by eighteen sixty and this is this is roughly this is close enough to zero to say zero percent and the same holds for for this. Now when we're looking at these numbers here, 1700 over 1860, we convert that to a percentage, should get about 91%. And here you have 160 over 1860, convert that to a percentage, you get roughly 9%. So, again, most of the, the overwhelming majority of the product is tertiary substitution product, but you do get a significant amount of secondary substitution product. And, and that's largely because there, well, there are two hydrogens, who's two secondary hydrogens here whose substitution can lead to a uh, secondary product, but there's only one primary hydrogen whose substitution leads to a or sorry, one tertiary hydrogen whose substitution leads to the formation of a tertiary product. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more practice in calculating these product ratios.